Good morning, church, and welcome to Bethel Thedford. I'm Pastor Linda, and I'm delighted that you're here today. And we'll probably get out before the rain starts. Maybe. 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 I saw uh, drops that had uh, dropped there out on the sidewalk. So. It's okay for rain. My van needs to wash. <laughs> the gardens all need to be watered, too. Okay, we're going to sing This is the Day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all praise, glory, and honor, because only you're worthy, nobody else. And Lord, today, as on Friday, I'm using a prayer from Daniel. He prayed to you, and you heard him, and you listened to what he was saying. I pray, Lord, that you hear it from us as well. Oh, Lord. You are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant. And you keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. Oh, our God, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead. For your own sake, Lord, smile again on your desolate sanctuary. Oh, my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your sanctuary lays empty or near empty. We make this plea not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay. Do not delay, O oh my God, for your people and your church. Lord, I know Daniel's prayer is praying for where he was at the time. We're using that for where we are now. And we need you, Lord. We need you completely. We need you individually. We need you as a church and the church building and the property. But above all, Lord, we welcome you in this place. We need you here with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is, no, we did this is the day. What's this one called? Holy, holy, holy. I'm looking at this. I left it on the screen. There, make that one blank and it works better. Okay, holy, holy, holy.
I am to worship.
us nor forsake us. We just have to remember that. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there is a notice out on the bulletin board for the uh, day of prayer. Uh, National Day of Prayer. It's October the 1st, and uh, it's nationwide. It says, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. And that's why it's National Day of Prayer. Let us fast and pray for Canada. Our time to unite our hearts beyond our denominations. That means it's everybody across Canada. And they're calling for the Esther fast, the Mordecai fast. And we're familiar with the book of Esther. And we're going to be talking about that uh, in the message today as well, because we're talking about prayer and fast. Okay. Friday evening, we looked at uh, prayer and fasting and why the two work together when uh, coming before the Father for help and for answers. When we look at the book of Matthew, and that's the one that we use a fair bit, we're reminded that Jesus teaches its disciples and ultimately us, because we read the Bible, uh, how to pray. It's important to know how to pray before you can pray, right? Although sometimes it just takes one word. Jesus. That's it. That's it. Okay, Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13 is going to tell us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now, he had a reason for teaching them to pray that, because they were asking. They wanted to be able to pray, and pray with power, and pray so that they could get answers. But not only that, they also said that John had taught his disciples how to pray, so they wanted to know how to pray properly as well. Then we go down a little further in chapter 6. And we see what we need to do first, absolutely first. Verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. So we look for God first when we want to pray. We look to God first when we need anything, anything at all. We look to him when we need help. When we're confused, when we're lonely, we look to God for answers and answers that nobody else can give us. Now, the last verse of that chapter is verse number 34. And there, that, that tells us not to worry. That's, that's kind of hard, isn't it? But you know, then that you makes you think of another verse that uh, we lean on too. And I think that was Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything instead of pray about everything. Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't have that one up there. But this one I do, it says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Well, isn't that the truth? Why borrow trouble before we need it? So we don't worry about tomorrow. We just handle today. And we ask God to be with us today, today. That put everything into perspective. Be ready for now. Because we don't know if today's going to be our last day, so why worry about tomorrow? Today's the only one we, that we've got right now. So we need to put God first. So our message is on prayer and fasting. Prayer is when we're talking to God. But what is fasting going to do for us? Make us hungry, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But <laughs> the one reason we uh, fast is because Jesus fasted. <laughs> And yeah, that's about where we're told that you get hungry. Matthew 4, verses uh, 1 and 2 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. hungry. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so that's a negative for fasting, right? You get hungry. It does not feel good to be hungry. But you think about around the world and the number of people that are hungry all the time. 
that when they get some food, they've, I think they've, they learn that you take a little bit now and you save it for a little bit later because you don't know when the next one is going to come. But they live with it. They live with the hunger. And I'm not talking spiritual hunger. They're living with spiritual hunger too. But they live with a phys physical hunger. And that hurts. It hurts. You know that when you're trying to diet, that uh, if you're giving up foods and you're, 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 that's what you seem to hunger for, is foods you're not supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. Foods that taste the best. Mm -hmm. That's the ones that, uh, that you want. To stay away from the donuts. Stay away from the donuts, yeah. There's a whole bunch left there, so I'm going to be throwing those out. No. Are they, <laughs> no, 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 no. Are they getting a little hard? You dip them in your coffee. They're, right they're, right now. now they're dipping donuts. Okay. Like dipping donuts. Yeah. The more time we spend with God, the more we will see God working in our lives. And that is a fact. The more you see God working in your life, the more your faith increases. Jesus gives directions on how to fast. Again, in Matthew 6. And it's verses 16 to 18. And when you fast... You notice he doesn't say if. He says when you fast. That's saying that you're going to fast. At some point in time, you're going to fast because you're going to be needing answers from God. You're going to need to get closer to God at some point. We all do. When you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth. That is the only reward that they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will notice that you are fasting, except your father, who knows what you do in private, and your father, who sees everything and will reward you. I'm not sure, um, like comb your hair and wash your face, I, that's, that's a standard um, taking care of yourself. <laughs> it, it made it sound like, like they rolled out of bed and then they... I don't know. But uh, when you fast, take care of yourself. Make sure that you're showered, you're washed, you're clean, clean clothes. Don't have to worry about food dripping down because you're fasting. Don't make yourself look like you're going without or that you're unkempt. Keep it between you and God. That's where it needs to stay. Don't tell people you're fasting, otherwise this stops being between you and God. It makes it a public spectacle. And that's not what you want. And that's not what God wants. What would the rewards of fasting be when it is between you and God? Well, first off, deliverance from whatever the problem is. Then the gifts of the Spirit and healings. And my goodness, there are so many people that are sick and in need right now. We need the healings. Another uh, gift is hearing the voice of God. Isn't that amazing? As you get closer and closer to God when you fast, you hear the voice of God in your spirit, sometimes verbally, audibly, you do. You also get increased faith. Strongholds are broken down. And that's one thing that we've been praying about, too. God's rewards are unlimited. Unlimited. We can't name all of the rewards. Many people are not willing to set the fleshly desires aside. They like their food. Or they like their TV. Or they like the games. Or they like whatever. And when you like that stuff more than you like God, then you're making those things idols. And we do not, do not want to do that. Fasting with prayer can and will overcome impossible obstacles, even your uh, fear of fasting. Because we have faith enough to do it, to trust God, to hear, and to answer the impossible. So throughout scripture we see where people from all walks of life fasted and prayed. There was kings, prophets, common people fasted and prayed. Esther. This uh, day of prayer, it's the Mordecai and Esther fasting. Okay, Esther had asked to have all of her people fast for three days. And she and her maids were going to fast as well. And prayer. There's no sense fasting if you're not going to pray. Because if all you're doing is fasting, all you're doing is putting yourself on a diet. 
because the object of it is to pray. So you fast and you pray. Now she was going to be fasting and praying because she had to go see the king because her people were destined for death. Because, well, I'm not going to go through all of that. If I go through all of that, then I'll miss the rest of this. I, but we'll be going through that at some point. Because all of the Jewish people were going to be put to death. So Esther, chapter 4, verse 16, says, Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day, my maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in and see the king. If I must die, I must die. She knew what could happen. Because if she's not invited to the royal throne, then she could be killed. It would be up to him. If he held his scepter out to her, then she was welcomed in. And fortunately, she was welcomed in. Remember that what we pray for must line up with God's will. It's the same anytime you're praying. It's got to be in God's will. And if you pray scripture, you know it's God's will because it's scriptural. It's already there. It's already been heard. But we're taking it and we're reminding God that this has taken place. And this is what we need. And that's why I like that one from Daniel 9 because that's what we need. We need. And God knows it but he wants us to reach out to him. Now his will is that we're healthy. And we have what we need. Not necessarily what we want. There's a big difference. Ask the kids. They need a good meal, but I want McDonald's. Well, no, we said a good meal. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I like McDonald's once in a while too. But I find that the, the grease really bothers my stomach. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't when I was younger. Ellie just loves it. But when she gets older, I think it'll, it'll bother her too. It's, there's so much grease in it. I don't know what kind it is, but at any rate, it tastes good. One of the needs is to be safe. And that we believe in Jesus. That's a requirement. But you know he'll answer, even if you don't believe, because sometimes that's the way to uh, catch your attention. Remember with Paul? He didn't believe in Jesus, but he got his attention. Oh, yes. And then he dedicated the rest of his life to do what, uh, what Jesus wanted. But we need to believe that Jesus lived, that he died for our sins. But not only that, he was buried, and then he was resurrected to life again, and he is still alive. He ascended into heaven to be with his Father. Okay, fasting shows that what you are praying about is serious enough that you're willing to pay a personal cost. And that's a cost that nobody else can pay. Joel 1.14, announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. That's what this uh, notice is, announcing a time of fasting. Bring the leaders and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God and cry out to him there. That was very important, what they needed to do, because all of the crops are dying. The, uh, the streams were all dried up. The animals were all dying. They were starving to death. The people had no food. So they were offering themselves as sacrifices, living sacrifices by fasting. Now, I say they had no food. They had food there but not enough to keep going without this crop because you counted on the crops that came in to carry you through the season until the next crop was planted and harvested. So they're offering themselves. Fasting is not easy. If it was, it wouldn't be called a sacrifice. Our body wants to be in control, or as Paul puts it, the flesh wants to be in control, but we must follow the spirit. Galatians 5, verses 16 and 17. This is Paul. He says, I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. And one of his biggest problems was that 
He wanted to do what was right, but usually turned around and did what he didn't want to do. And it was so upsetting to him because the flesh would be taking over. And that's something that he even fought with. So the fact that we do shouldn't be a surprise. Though your time of fasting may seem to be a long time, you need to feed your spirit, and then that will help. And you feed your spirit by reading the Bible, by listening to scripture, by listening to worship music. And while you're fasting, not eating food, your flesh is being crucified. It will continually try to feed on something, anything. If not food, then on movies and social media, surfing the net, watching or reading world events that get you all worked up. We're going to look at uh, verse 17 again, the bottom part of this one here. For the flesh has desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. That's why when you, you can't eat, you know you're supposed to go and pray during the time you're supposed to eat, but instead you think, oh, you walk and by the TV controller and you think, oh, I just put that on for a few minutes, that won't be so bad. What happens to prayer? Gone out the window. Fasting without much prayer is like having a car with no gas to operate the vehicle. Oh, Hank, you know how that works. <laughs> or a lawnmower. Without the gas in there, it's not going to do anything, is it? Not worth a darn. No, no. That's the same with fasting. Without yeah, prayer, it's not doing any good. Better fuel gauge on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can blame it on almost anything. While you fast, you must double down in prayer. You'll find when you fast that you need to be alone with the Lord more, away from the distractions of the world, away from the television, away from the social media, away from mind mindlessly surfing the net. A lot of us work on the computer. So we have to use the computer, but we have to fight the urge to start searching or going through marketplace. Away from anything and everything that distracts you from prayer and from God. What's that look for? It is a sacrifice. Fasting releases God's supernatural power. Being united in prayer and fasting has been used down through the ages to let God know that we need him to take control and to let him know that what we are praying for is important to us. And you know if it's important to us, it's important to God. And he hears. He sees that. And there are times it only takes one to call on God, as we saw when we were going through Chronicles. God heard and answered, and that was Hezekiah. Ezra, the scribe, was well versed in the law of Moses. He was also a direct descendant of Aaron, and Aaron was a priest, which means that Ezra is a priest. And he was leading some people back to Jerusalem with the blessings of King Artaxerxes of Persia. And the king had sent gold and silver for the temple. They were rebuilding the temple. Ezra was instructed to appoint magistrates and judges who knew God's law to govern the people. And he was to teach the people God's law if they didn't know it because they had been in uh, exile for 70 years, so they had taken on some other beliefs. So Ezra 8, verses 21 to 23. I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before our God. We prayed that he would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children, and our goods as we traveled. For I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from the enemies along the way. After all, we had told the king, our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him, but his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. God wants to answer our prayers. Fasting prepares us for God's answers. It opens the door. We're showing our sincerity in prayer when we sacrificially fast. In the Bible, we observe the people of God fasting for a variety of reasons. They're facing a crisis. They're seeking God's protection and deliverance. They had been called to repentance and renewal. They were asking God for guidance. 
They were humbling themselves in worship. There's many types of fasts, and the options you choose depends on your health and the desired length of your fast and your preference. A water fast means to abstain from all foods and juices. A partial fast means to eliminate certain foods or specific meals. A juice fast means to drink only fruit or vegetable juices during meal times, but you fast only if your health allows it. When you fast, the intention is to bring glory to our Heavenly Father. Do it in faith, and God will honor your intentions. We're going to sing a few more songs. Did Alex go downstairs again? He was with Amy and Oh, okay. Oh. I knew somebody was sitting there. <laughs> well, he's getting bigger, too. Arise and sing.
the eyes of my heart, Lord. quiet before God.
browser, isn't it? That is a directory you can get it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer today. Thank you for your word, Lord. Help us to understand it. Father, open our eyes that we might see how great you are and how complete your provision is for this and every day. We claim victory in Jesus in our lives today, Lord. We declare that the word of God is true, and we choose to live today in the light of God's word. We choose, Heavenly Father, to live in obedience to you and in fellowship with you. Abba, we are confident that we can come to you with requests that are in our hearts and know that you hear and answer. We know the requests, bef you know the requests before they're even spoken, but it's in faith that we speak them. It's in obedience that we lift them up to you. We lift up the gentleman who has just had a partial leg amputation and ask them for healing and that it'll be complete without any further infection. We lift up his companion and ask that you be with her and comfort her, give her strength, and ask that they both come to know your saving grace. We lift up the gentleman whose cancer has come back and must go through chemo treatments and ask that you be with him as he walks this journey and ask that he sees that you are the only way to salvation and eternity in heaven. We lift up all the students who are back in school and ask that they remain strong in you with all the conflicting information that they get at school. We pray your protection over each and every one of them and we lift up the teachers and workers in the schools and the bus drivers and caretakers that they are blessed with compassion and understanding as they deal with and work with and teach the students. We lift up our politicians and ask that your hand is in the election, that we will have godly leadership. We lift up our church body and ask that you bless each and every one and a double blessing on the ones who remain and work hard to get things done to welcome your people in. Have your way in this place, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God be with you. Until we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, sky to hold you. With the sheep securely fold. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, each and every one of you and may God be with you till we meet again and we have that'll be Monday for some of us we have uh, a board meeting on Monday too right